Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. And it's been a while since we've actually been down in the garage. I'm in the process of kind of cleaning up my mess. I've had a lot of other work projects and stuff going on down here. Uh, on top of it, I am prepping a turbo for shipment. Gave that away over on the Patreon. I got another turbo back there I'm giving away on the Patreon here soon. So if you're interested in how you can win that, make sure you click the description link down below that goes over to patreon.com slash goat rope garage. There will be details in the future on what kind of competition we're going to do for that one. Uh, that being said, thank you to all the new subscribers. Thank you to all the new patrons. But besides cleaning the garage, I'm not just down here to shoot a video on cleaning the garage. I need to tighten up some of the hardware on my four link suspension. And since some of you guys have asked me to go a little bit more in depth on how I did my four length, I thought, well, I'm gonna have the back end up in the air anyways. Let's get the camera down there. Let's shoot a good old fashioned video. I'll walk through the different parts that I used and kind of the steps that I went through for preparing my truck to do a custom four link. Uh, as far as I know, it's one of the only uh, trucks from this body style that has a drag four link on it i know that there's a couple out there that have lowering air system four links on it but this is a full drag setup adjustable uh you know you can adjust both top and bottom bars double adjustable qa1 coilovers in the rear so this is kind of the full setup now uh would i do it again yes and no i would do it a little bit different i would not run heim joints on both ends i've got heim joints on the on the frame side and on the axle side on the axle side it's fine on the frame side it's just noisy as all hell it, it's you know it really kind of makes it unstreetable but that being said i know that my bolts could be tightened up a little bit i'm going to throw some loctite on there see if everything will keep snugged up and maybe keep the noise to a minimum uh, if it keeps coming back, I might eventually modify the front brackets to go over to a bushing on the front end and then just leave the himes in the back end. But you'll see what I'm talking about whenever we get underneath the truck. For now, I'm going to keep on packing up turbos, cleaning up the shop, and then jacking that thing up in the air. Once I get that done, I'll see you guys underneath the truck. Okay, hopefully you guys can see all right. I just got done uh, tightening up the brackets on this, adding some red Loctite on here, the nylon nuts. I've adjusted these enough that they're starting to wear out. So uh, to kind of give you an overview, I am using a generic uh, four link kit for this size axle. They're available for many speed shops, Speedway, Jeg, Summit for the most part. And I did drop the axle completely out, remove the stock shock brackets because they were in the way of where the brackets want, where I wanted the brackets to be. But you can also see that, uh, if I go back here a little bit, this is the uh, factory uh, spring leaf, leaf spring. Bleh. Uh, mount and so just because of that alone man I, I've got about four or five more inches of backspace that I could run on a, a wheel and tire combination on this because of the four length that was one of the main reasons for doing this so uh, but as far as the axle goes I pulled it off I squared the brackets and the front of the brackets are squared to the pinion angle so I can actually use the brackets to double check pinion for whenever I'm setting up my four link I've got a video out there I'll, I'll post it up in the corner probably this corner uh, to going through the steps of setting up a four link but on top of it I then use the uh, bracket shock mounts my QA ones we'll swing around and look at those here in a second our mat are mounted to those and then they go up and I measured them off there is a round cross member frame cross member that the uh, coilovers are mounted to back there and they're both on the back side they were a flip uh, originally now they're both on the back side of it because it being a four link okay hopefully you can get a little better view of my uh, pan hard bar goes up to the frame up in the corner here crosses over the top of the carrier and then mounts you can see the bolt right there on the other side of the drive shaft mounts to the axle over there. Uh, and since there's no, there's only a side to side load on this, there's not, a, and it doesn't really actually carry any weight on the pan hard bar. Uh, basically, I just took a big ass bolt and welded it straight to the axle. 
and it's worked worked good so far. Keep everything centered. All it's all that does is center your rear end on a parallel uh, four link. So if you had a triangulated, you wouldn't need that. Uh, but a triangulated is a little bit more complicated to install. So this is the simpler setup with lots of adjustability. You can see my cross member. I built the cross member with a notch that I cut in uh, to go over, under the drive shaft. My brackets are mounted to that. They're boxed on the back side of it. And then there are runners that go up to the frame uh, because your bottom bars generally are your, gonna be the ones that carry most of the force from your your rear end and so that's what's pushing the vehicle forward so while this is a very very robust cross member and they're only set off about three inches from the frame so there's not really going to be much force carried through the center section uh, there are uh, outriggers basically to the frame to carry any extra load directly to the frame from the four link uh, so pretty straightforward you know uh, this would be the side originally i was going to originally this this kit came with bars that were significantly shorter i ended up building these bars custom uh to to links that i wanted to get the cross member up into a location in between the frames where i could have it strongly welded directly to the frames so it worked out real nice you know kind of got a nice drive shaft loop out of the ordeal still easy to pull the loop out of it but Here's kind of a better look at the front end of the the uh, cross member and where it's melt, welded down into the uh, the frame for extra rigidness. And surprisingly, I did all this with the bed on the truck. If I were to do it again, I would enlist some help to pull the bed off. You can see some of my fuel my fuel setup. Okay, so here you can see back side of the brackets, coil over mounts. Pretty straightforward, easy to get to the adjustability knobs on them down here at the bottom. Uh, you can actually, if you were to run out of length, you can move the brackets up to uh, actually raise the vehicle up even more than you can on the coilovers. But you can see I'm running kind of in the middle on this on this coilover and, and spring combination. And then up above here, you can see that round cross member that I was talking about uh, that they are mounted to. So. Straightforward and easy. Whenever I was doing the brackets, you know, it took a long time because I did the brackets off the vehicle, but with the axles in to try and minimize uh, warpage, the axle tubes like to warp whenever you weld on them. And so I did the welds in about one inch sections per side. So I would do an inch on one bracket, jump over to the other side, do an inch, then wait maybe five, 10 minutes. And then I would jump over, do an inch, uh, do the other side, and you know it took me probably two weeks all together uh, by the time i cleaned up the axle and i left this the spring perches the leaf spring perches on here so theoretically i could easily go back in oh actually no i take that back those are the bump stops the original bump stop perches are still on there uh, i cut off the leaf spring perches i'm not sure i think i left the bump stop perches in there in case i needed to run a bump stop if i were to lower it down but as you can see i've got plenty of room this thing is loaded right now so this is ride height uh, but uh, oh you know what i left the bump stop per perches on there in case i wanted to put helper bags on in case i did want to tow with this i could put an airbag helper bag in there and get back and actually still have some payload capacity on here because I still got the hitch on here. Uh, the thought process is, is eventually this thing will probably become a vehicle to tow an actual race car with, you know, a project car. And so because of that, I want to be able to throw some helper bags on there and it's just nice having the factory purchase in. Uh, but that's about it. So let's jump back out and we'll wrap up. So that's about it. Uh, you know, kind of an in-depth look at how my four link is set up. Uh, you know, it wasn't that expensive. Uh, honestly, I put the double adjustable QA1s on there. That was the majority of the cost because they're about, what, 220 or something for the double adjustables without the springs. So you're looking at 250 260 somewhere in that range kitted out per. Uh, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a little, little uh, metal from your local metal supplier to build the cross member out. The brackets kits weren't that expensive. The bars... 
were a little bit expensive because I spent a little bit better money on the heim joints whenever I built my own custom bars. I still got the old bars. They were they were real short. They were designed for a car that has more of a frame loop that goes directly over the axle as opposed to a long angled scoop over the axle like modern vehicles have. Uh, but, you know, it was well worth it. I love it except for that big thing that I talked about with having heim joints on the frame side of it. I'm still contemplating going in there and and uh, widening it out and uh, throwing bushings on that end just to mitigate the NVH because it clunks. Four links clunk, that's what they do. Parallels are known for clunking. Uh, but that being said, man, you get on this thing, the back end squats like nobody's business. It hooks up, it goes like stink. It made a huge difference. The thing drives like a car. Uh, you know, I, in fact, I've got issues with the Stabila track because the Stabila track gets pissed off at me because it says this vehicle should not be able to do what it's doing right now. Uh, but it's, it's for, for a truck, it is fairly impressive. Uh, but that being said, you know, it's nice to get back down in the garage, get my hands dirty again. It's been a while since we've been down here. We've got to shoot down here. I'm hoping to rectify that. The quality on this is going to be a little crappy. As I said, I'm in the transition period of getting new equipment for recording videos down here, but that will be coming here soon. So hopefully this looks all right and sounds all right. If it doesn't, I apologize, mea culpa. But as always, I want to thank all the subscribers. I want to thank all the patrons. I want to thank everybody. If you like this video, throw a thumbs up. If you got any questions, hit up the comments down below. Make sure and check out the tuning series and check out Thursday night's garage, uh, Goat Road Garage in tune live Thursdays, 8 Eastern. I love it whenever you guys show up, ask questions, communicate. Uh, you know, people were in there before I was even this last Thursday talking to each other, talking about their project cars, stuff like that. That's awesome. We're getting a kind of a cool community built around the channel. And uh, I mean, I couldn't do it without you guys. You're, you are the garage. So uh, thanks for stopping by the garage. And remember, ABT, always be tuning.